I put on some makeup just for just for you. <laughs> oh, you, you're so kind. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi there, this is Will from Serotonin and today we have got an absolute treat for you. Essentially, over the next hour or so, myself and Abby Jenkins, who runs Plant-Based Moods, are gonna be having a general conversation around plant-based eating and sort of her general lifestyle as a result of, of being a vegan. As you've seen so far, we've had sort of a string of posts coming from Abby, but in all honesty, we wanted to make sure we got a full-blown conversation in. So, Abby. Thank yeah. you so much for joining me. Yeah, I'm very excited to talk with you, Lil. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be, it's, I'm, I'm seriously excited for it. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, I think before we dive into anything, I think we yeah. need a little bit of an origin story because everyone loves an yes. origin story. Yeah, how do we so know how each did... other? Why, do, that's why it. am I American and you're British? How do we know each other? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. So, take it away. Yeah, so Will and I actually met uh, when I was studying abroad in England. So I went to UEA with him for a semester, and my friend Paige and I quickly joined the Ultimate Frisbee team there because we were looking for people to meet and kind of get ingrained in the community, and that's where we met Will because he was captain at the time. And the three of us, along with our friend Dylan, just kind of all hit it off, and we just started hanging out most nights. and. Um, yeah, we just became friends through just kind of common interests and doing a lot of the same things. And now here we are, we're still talking to each other about like four years later, maybe even five years. So yeah, I'm That's, glad we're that still connected. That for me, that for yeah. me is the most insane thing is yeah. that it's been four years. I literally met you for what, a matter of maybe three, four months and we're still going strong, which is yeah. just so great. And I think that you know, there's definitely people that you meet in the world that you just kind of hang on to. Like, you don't really need to talk 24-7 to kind of keep that relationship alive. It's just always easy whenever it happens. And I think I, that's the kind of relationship we have. So it's great. <laughs> I I think that almost that's becoming a bit more, maybe it's just because we're getting older. I'm not too yeah. sure. But that feels to be a bit more of like a, a common occurrence almost where it's it's not about necessarily being in contact like, you know, all the all the time because ultimately yeah. at the moment we can do that with with you know every form of social media and every form of messaging app but there's sort of the what can be the tell of a, like a, a special relationship is when you manage to just sort of you know we can go a few months or so not necessarily have like ma like massive interactions and then we'll have right. that conversation like it was literally yesterday yeah so. and like i haven't physically seen you since like like three years it's been like three years you came to the u.s <sighs> once <laughs> And yeah. I saw you for maybe a night and that was it. And then before then, yeah, I hadn't seen you for like two years. So yeah, it's kind of crazy how we can stay so connected these days, yeah. which is great, but um, it's definitely a little weird sometimes to think yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. You know, there, there is going to be a journey on the cards at some stage. We're going to reunite yes. and that's going to yes, be, that's going to be the greatest time. Yeah. But the, the thing with, um, the thing with when we were actually together, so when we were actually in Norwich, yeah. You know, the, the, the sort of the surreal thing is that we didn't necessarily spend much time because it was such a short window of time. Yeah. We didn't really spend much time talking about like cooking or, or what we ate. It was sort of no. normally like grab and go kind of stuff. And I suppose from my own perspective, I was a, a pretty heavy meat eater at this particular Me, point anyway. Me too. So the sort of the, <laughs> the diet didn't really come up at that point. Um, right. Were you a vegan at that point? No, no, I wasn't. So I, yeah, I actually distinctly remember coming my abroad journey was kind of where I started getting into cooking, um, not necessarily vegan cooking, but you know, we didn't have, you know, at, at Dickinson College where I, where I went to school, we had a big cafeteria that everybody would go to every day and that wasn't necessarily the case where in, at Norwich. Um, I think you guys did have a cafeteria, but I didn't frequent it very often. We had kitchens near our living um, accommodation. So I started cooking a lot there and that's actually where I started getting kind of into feeding myself and I was like, what? 19 at the time so like you know I was I barely knew what I was doing um but I remember <laughs> distinctly making like chicken curries and um all these different things and eating a lot of eggs and um just trying to feed myself based off of the knowledge that I knew beforehand but yeah it never was a topic of conversation because it was just normal like every you know the, kind of a carnivorous diet is a very normalized yeah. thing people just that's what people eat like that's usually what people grow up eating and it's not really something people talk about it's just kind of is you know yeah 
it's yeah. it's definitely been even like in my own perspective it's it's been literally the the last couple of years and it, and it hasn't really been until i've almost had like much more significant contact with someone that hasn't uh, who doesn't consistently eat meat that you actually start to realize that oh and okay well i don't it. actually need to yeah i yeah. don't know why i've actually not done this earlier but um so at this point then how long have you been eating a, a plant-based diet and then what what yeah. made you make that transition yeah so it my journey kind of comes in waves so i started really doing it about i think it was like the summer of 2019, maybe even, no, no, sorry, 2018. It was right when I moved into this big apartment with a bunch of my friends. Um, so it was 2018, about the summer, that summertime. Um, but actually, I had started thinking about it for a really long time, like probably a year or so before. And actually, one of my main kind of eye-opening moments was um, I was working at my this farm that is um, – partnered with the school that I used to go to and part of the crops I guess or the products that we would make were animal products and meat and I remember one day I was working with the sheep and my boss was kind of you know we were clipping their nails and flipping them over and doing all these crazy things and you know I really enjoyed working with the animals but I remember my boss turns to me and he's like all right we got to pick a few out to send to the slaughterhouse and I was like what I just Ouch. spent all these hours with these animals <laughs> okay and he was just pointing he was like okay well this sheep is a little bit rambunctious and tends to run away a lot so we don't want to breed those genes let's send him away to you know get nixed and i was Ouch. it just was a very you know specific moment for me where i realized i didn't i didn't like eating sheep or lamb i was never a lamb eater anyway but i was just kind of mm -hmm. like whoa these are like living creatures and we're just deciding who's gonna be eaten next it was just a very interesting moment but that wasn't actually the moment that i like went vegetarian just even. just out just out of curiosity yeah. on that particular moment did you yeah. end up choosing any of the sheep or were, at that point were you almost like point blank like i, I don't I really want to be a part of, of this i was just like i i mean i didn't really know the sheep well enough my you know my boss was saying this to all of us that were working that day and i remember my colleague um was just like oh yeah that like she had more knowledge about who was personalities I guess and she pointed out a few but I you know I saw the ones that were gonna be you know sent away and I was like okay bye <laughs> um yeah but yeah so so that wasn't necessarily the moment but that's what started like making me think about it and then as the mm. years went on I, you know in the cafeteria at school I would start to like okay maybe I will do meatless Mondays or maybe I'll just like not eat meat for lunch and breakfast um and so I started to just kind of like slowly kind of taper myself off. And then I will say like once I got out of school and I started, you know, entering in the real world and I was living in an apartment with Max, my partner, and a few of our friends, that's when I started to just feel like it wasn't really connecting with me to eat, to keep eating meat. And so I started kind of, you know, I first took out red meat. So I wasn't eating uh, steak or pork anymore. And I was just eating chicken and turkey. And then slowly it just kind of kept getting less and less and less. And honestly, a big part of it was um, Max because he was a meat eater and you know so was i and it was something we had grown up doing and so that was the hardest part was having someone that you made meals with every day that was also still eating meat so that mm -hmm. was the hardest thing and then you know as we kind of got older and probably about earlier of that year of 2018 we kind of were starting to learn more about like the food system in general and how these animals are being treated and also you know, sustainability and uh, climate change. What sort, what sort of age was that? Um, I was 22, 23. Mm, and I'm yeah. 26 now. So it was a few years ago. Um, so we started just kind of informing ourselves about, you know, the realities of how animal agriculture plays out in our food system, you know, both for the animals, the world, other people around. And we just really started to think to ourselves, huh, this is just like, we're contributing to this kind of harmful system. What can we mm. do? And so Max also started eating less meat and kind of coming along this journey with me. And we were actually, I remember it very distinctly. Uh, he was kind of having his own like little mental health crisis about the state of the world. You know, there's a lot going on 
Trump was yeah. still a, had just been like elected. It was like oh, doomsday. I mean, we could talk about that for days. Yeah, we, yeah. we're not going to talk about him. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> we were both just feeling very dismayed. And I remember we were sitting in the movies and he just turns to me and he was like, we got to just go cold turkey. We got to go vegan. Like we can't, like dairy and eggs is like so, it's such a big part of the problem as well. So like, let's just, we're gonna move into this new apartment, fresh start, let's just start cooking for ourselves and you know, figure, figure it out. And that's what we did. And so it's been, you know, obviously we have slip ups and like there are still times yeah, where course. like, you know, I'll be at my parents' house and like my sister made cookies, I'm like gonna have one of her cookies, you know? It's, but it's about <laughs> the choices that you personally make, like maybe the money that you're putting towards food or whatever. Um, but yeah, and so it definitely was hard at first and, um, mm. I had a bunch it's... of slip ups, but yeah, so it's about since 2018 and it's just kind of, it was not a quick, like I'm vegan now. It was like a very yeah. slow kind of transition. And then there was that kind of moment where we were like, we're already vegetarian. Let's just go through. Let's just do it. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. And I mean, I, th I think for, for so many people, I think that is sort of the approach that ends up getting taken where, you know, yeah. you're starting to have certain realizations about certain things. And then it's often when you sort of, I suppose, if, if you're maybe a young person and you're around parents or friends who are maybe already mm -hmm. doing the same thing, then maybe you will follow that trend a little bit sooner. But if, yeah. if it's something that you're coming into um sort of almost where you have been a meat eater it is it's always going to be that transitional period and, and you you sort of said it really quite well actually where when you first start cooking it's less mm -hmm. about you know you do sort of consider nutritional value i guess but you yeah. are more like can i actually put something on my plate here can i actually yeah. make something and tasty. it's yeah it's interesting to yeah tasty <laughs> um, I, I mean so many of the first meals i had at university were so right. so budget but but yeah. anyway, I digress. Um, so it, again, the, the interesting thing is that you, you obviously spoke up about sort of the around the animal cruelty and certain things yeah. and then how sort of the state of the world sort of, um, started to change, essentially. Mm -hmm. But what I'm quite interested in, and I think I started to pick up on that in sort of the last little bit, is, is how health driven was mm. this this change? So initially, like not at all which is interesting because a lot of people, that's what they do it for. They go vegan because they've heard of the health benefits and that's like the prime, you know, it's a, it's almost like a very trendy diet as opposed to like a lifestyle. But for me, mm. it was mainly, um, I think at the beginning it was ma mainly the animal cruelty. I really got into a wormhole on YouTube and I was watching all these just horrific videos. YouTube is a monster for that. Yeah, and I started watching like Cowspiracy and all these like Netflix documentaries and I just like forced myself to watch it so that I would like make that connection. And so that for me, I was like, I don't want to contribute to this. Like, this is sad. <laughs> so that was the mm. main thing. And then honestly, like the sustainability piece was like a nice extra. Um, and you know, as I've learned, then I started learning more about that and I realized just how animal agriculture is so detrimental to our food system because we're literally growing fields and fields and fields of just really unnutritious corn and soy that's ruining our soil quality and our earth and our ecosystems because we're cutting down all this land to pump it through a full of pesticides and all this stuff. And then we're just taking that feed, that corn and soy and feeding it to animals so that way we can feed ourselves. Like it just doesn't make mm. a lot of sense. So I, I kind of was taking a look at um, just how I could not contribute to that kind of system because that's just not a very sustainable system. And honestly, um, if you read my blog post and some of the research that I've done, going vegan or vegetarian is like the single most um, – impactful thing you can do for the environment which is really interesting because most people think to like oh i'm gonna start driving less i'm gonna eat local i'm gonna take shorter showers where like food is really uh, like where like animal agriculture specifically contributes to s such a large percentage of greenhouse emissions and so that was the kind of second part 
Um, but mm. let's go back to the health thing. So that kind of came mm. later because actually it's funny that you say this because around this same time I was going through um, a little bit of some body image, you know, not, not being very excited about my body <laughs> as I think yeah. a lot of people, as a lot of people do. Yeah. 100%. To. And quite frankly, like I had sprained my ankle about like a few months before I had just, so I wasn't really exercising very much. I had just started a new job where I was working in an office cubicle all day, every day. And I was working specifically with like a, an event team. So there was catered food all the time. And, you know, it was free. There was like, Ooh, yeah, get, yeah. I, I know. So you're sitting all day at this desk and there's literally like three meals plus a morning snack and an afternoon snack and then like an ice cream bar like every day. And so I was just <laughs> like, this is great. Yeah, and I was going to say, I bet you were having the time of your life. Yeah, it was great at the time. And so, but I realized I, I mean, it slowly I started to pack on weight and like I wasn't as active as I was um, in college because in college I was like, you know, working on a farm and captain of the ultimate frisbee team and here I was you know yeah. sitting at a desk all day now and um I wasn't getting that consistent exercise that I was used to and and so this kind of was all happening and so I really kind of took a look at myself and I was like wow my body is not really matching what's up here and like not that like it has to but I just wanted to kind of bring those closer together um, yeah for sure and, and so I knew that obviously going vegan was going to help with all those things that I said before, but I was like, huh, maybe it will help me lose some weight or even just like feel fitter in my body. Cause my, my goal wasn't to lose weight. It was mostly to like, just kind of feel more comfortable and like build muscle and, um, kind of get yeah. more tones, not just like lose fat. Um, yeah, I get and, you. Yeah. And so, you know, as I started eating this way, the first thing I really noticed was just how much like lighter I felt. And especially mm. with not eating dairy, like there were times where, you know, I mean, I don't think dairy agrees with a lot of people to be honest. So like, it does not agree and, with me. Yeah. It's... So I remember, you know, stop when I stopped eating dairy, I was just like, Oh my God, I don't feel like I'm going to explode after eating some vegan ice cream or whatever it was like it just I felt lighter in my body and I could and I just felt like I was running more clean if that makes sense but, yeah I think but so I, but I will say it's not like I was eating salads like I was eating like <laughs> like Max and I would deep fry like tempeh every every week we would just make like big mac and cheese dinners mm. and like it wasn't like we were eating anything really different it was just a veganized version of what we used yeah. to eat well and, i mean we'll we'll come on to your um yeah onto your website or your your blog post essentially yes. because you know that i mean it's just full of so many great ideas in there thanks <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just it's so it's it's great to hear because yeah i think as you i think you rightly pull it before is that sometimes you know not necessarily becoming vegan but if i focus more on the plant-based diet side yeah. of things so rather than maybe the sort of ethical con considerations that go in with that mm -hmm. but sometimes as you say like the the plant-based diet gets seen as as almost like a fad and yeah. that it's not something that you know is is long term like or maybe has like or a, like yeah like mm. paleo yeah exactly yeah yeah and that's it's definitely the thing that i've maybe discovered the most out of because I would say I've been, you know, starting to, to move more towards a plant based diet over the last maybe year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that I've noticed is ultimately I don't actually have to really change my diet that much. There's, no. you know, just you very quickly can replace um, certain like small pieces from what was, you know, in your, your meat based dishes to, to plant based. And it's I think right. it's only ever growing, which but I mean, we'll, we'll come on to that because uh, there's yeah. loads that I there's just so much I want to ask you about essentially. Yeah. So from, from what I can tell is that you've certainly felt some, some positive help in, um, health implications, sorry. Mm -hmm. One obviously sort of to do with being able to control um, your weight or maybe body fat percentage and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then there was sort of the sensation of feeling that little bit lighter. Is, yeah. is there sort of any other health implications that you feel like you've, you've maybe felt as a result of changing to that diet? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess one of the biggest ones is the fact that over, I guess I've been vegan for like three, three, almost four years, like over that period, I had lost about 20 to 25 pounds, which wow. 
is like a lot, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. and I, but I didn't do it with the intention of doing it. It just kind of slowly slipped off me. You know what I mean? And yeah. I also started working out a lot more, but I think because I was focusing or I'm not even focusing, but I was being more mindful about what I was putting in my body. That 100%. also led me to be like, oh, well, maybe I should go for a run or like figure out yeah. an exercise, you know, like get my blood pumping and feel good mm. so that, you know, everything can I kind of work in together. And I also yes. like, I found the right type of exercise that like really works with me. Like I'm not a runner. I don't like going for runs. Like I get bored. Mm. I can't do it. So I oh, actually, what's your go to? I do a lot. I actually don't do that much cardio. I do a lot of uh, body weight exercises. So like Pilates mm. and like just like doing a bunch of push ups and some sit ups yeah. and some like bike bicycles. And I do a lot of yeah. mad fit workouts on YouTube. Check her out. She is great. Um, rec- we always love a recommendation. Yeah, always love a recommendation. She's awesome. She does like 30 minute things and I do try and do them a few times a week. But yeah, so I mostly started doing those. And like I said, I sprained my ankle. So I was like, okay, at that time I was like, okay, I can only do yoga. So I got into yoga and that mm. was really helpful and kind of just made, again, had that kind of mindful attitude towards your body. Um, so it wasn't just the plant-based eating, it, that kind of, you know, allowed me to lose that weight. It was um, just kind of the mindfulness that came with that, that then led mm. me to kind of discover the exercises that I liked and that worked with me and what made me feel good. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, over that's the, that's the, sorry, go on. No, I was just saying over the course of three years, I lost weight and like that mm. is now I look in the mirror and I, I, my body looks completely different than pictures of me from three years ago. And I'm like, Whoa, like I didn't even plan for this, but like, okay, like I'll hang with it. <laughs> and, um, and so like, I mean, I'm not saying that's going to happen to everyone, but I think a lot of people have experienced the same thing where it doesn't happen overnight. If you go vegan, you're not going to lose 10 pounds in three months. Like it's literally took me three years to like, kind of get to the ideal state that I'm in now. So it's, mm. yeah, that was probably the biggest thing for me. I, I think the sort of the the biggest message to, to take from that really is the influence of the diet mm-hmm. on your mindset towards yeah. exercise. Because, yeah. I mean, certainly from coming from a PE teaching background, like something yeah. that I push all the time is this idea that, you know, you can do all of this exercise with me, you can do whatever, you can find that that one thing. And that's really important because you, like yeah. you said, you have to be able to navigate exercise to find what works for you. And that is the great thing about exercise is it, it changes. You can It can yeah. be whatever you need it to be, but it must go past, uh, part and parcel with what you're eating. And it's right. so great to hear that, you know, you made a choice around eating a plant-based diet and that then went on to have significant health implications in the sense of what that did for your exercise. So, yeah. you know, it, it just sounds, kinda, sounds like a real win for you. Yeah. I mean, I, it's great. <laughs> I, yeah. I think, <laughs> like you said, it's just, it made me more aware. And I think we just get really caught up in our day to day life and we're fed you know, advertisements for milk and stuff. And we just get Mm. so accustomed to what's thrown at us that when we actually take a second to like take a step back and say like, wait a second, what am I, what am I doing to myself? What am I putting in here? What, what am I getting? Like what's happening? And that's, yeah. yeah. And then it kind of just gives you a moment to be like, okay, let me figure out what works. Let's, let's just feel a little bit better. So yeah. Just out of curiosity, do you feel that the um, advertisement in the U.S. has changed at all, and that you see more plant-based products in 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 well, I don't know, in well, any form of media? Well, I think also this kind of stems into another topic of just targeted ads. So I think I definitely oh yeah get more get ad, plant-based ads just because you know I'm constantly online. Like I have you know like literally. You're so right. They're, they're You're tracking so right. me. They know I'm vegan. They're throwing <laughs> vegan stuff at me. Um, but I mean, at least in the US, I mean, I don't know what the situation Maybe. is in the UK, but yeah. But like there is, it's a big, I don't know, like eating meat is still a huge part of our culture, I guess, if you can call yeah. it. Um, and I don't, I mean, I don't go out very much these days, as many people don't. Well, <laughs> but, yeah, I can't, um, I can't say I, we're going anywhere. But I think, I 
think people are shifting towards uh, plant-based foods, and I see a lot more advertisements just, like, out and about the city, not necessarily about plant-based foods, but, like, being sustainable and, like, those types mm -hmm. of choices. And, like, I see definitely more things like that now than I did probably five years ago. Um, yeah. So. I think, yeah, I think there's some parallels there. I mean, I'm curious as to, to, to maybe what the, the reasoning behind it is. I think it's great to see the loads more plant-based, um, well, plant-based things coming out, but ultimately there, a lot of them are, are mainly like supplements. So check, you know, it'd be like yeah. fake chicken or fake meat or something like that. But right. I mean, if yeah. that's, if that's a way to help transition, then, you know, I'm, I'm all in and I've had multiple yeah. of these things and they taste great. So yeah no i love i think we have like beyond meat beef and like impossible meat and there's like you can get like soy chicken nuggets and i i don't eat that stuff all the time just because it is like pretty processed yeah. and not yeah, that yeah, I get you. everything processed is bad but like you know it's just it's more of like when i'm really craving something like that i'll do it but it's not like in my normal repertoire yeah. but one thing i will say just kind of back to the um advertisements is that at least in the u.s the government actually subsidizes a lot of uh kfos which are concentrated animal feeding operations which are those you know the places that literally all all that stuff comes from like all the bad stuff so the fact that the government's like subsidizing those operations kind of like lets mm. you have some insight into the way in which that that those advertisements then kind of come through because it's like the government is literally supporting these these companies and they need obviously people to buy their products so i'm sure there are advertisements out there mm. um yeah so yeah for sure um just out of curiosity well i'm sort of curious off this now um yeah. simply because you've, you've you've spoken a little bit around um, sort of the the inclusion of more exercise in your in your day to day habits, but yeah, are there any other aspects of your of your day to day life, or maybe just not necessarily day to day, but just general life that you feel have changed as a result of eating a plant based diet? Yeah, I mean, I really got into cooking. <laughs> so <laughs> I, that's I a spent, that's a win. Yeah, so I I developed a new hobby. Um, yeah, I mean, that was probably the biggest thing with how I structured my day. Like, before I didn't really give food too much thought. It was kind of just like, I got, I'm hungry, let's eat. But now it's the sort of thing where Max and I wake up in the morning and we're like, what are we eating? And you're thinking dinner? about what you're going to eat. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And so it definitely has given me, I mean, cooking's not for everybody. Not everybody loves it. Um, but for me, at least, I, I have really fallen in love with it. I just, I think I've had... A lot of good experiences like coming up with new recipes and new ideas and it's fun to just like try something completely new and then you put it on your plate and you're like oh my god this is delicious did I write that down I don't think I did shit <laughs> like you know yeah. um, <laughs> and um, so yeah so cooking definitely became one of my hobbies but I think in general it did just make me more mindful and aware and how mm. I go about my daily life like it just kind of made me like think about you know also choices that I make when I'm purchasing things at the store so like i try and gravitate towards glass objects as opposed to plastic or i try and buy clothing second hand and thrift as opposed to um going to gap and yeah, buying yeah, a brand new pair yeah, of jeans you. you know so it's just kind of influenced like the sustainable kind of mindset of like trying to you know look on facebook marketplace for a used something as opposed to just going to the store and buying it and having mm. kind of a more um, community-based like trade kind of approach to getting and new things so um, that's another part um, that kind yeah. of has developed it's... just as I've thought about it and also I just like try and take more time for myself and like I put more effort into you know making sure I'm okay and like I journal mm. or like you know, obviously with COVID, like so much stuff has happened and like we, I think everybody's going through a mental health crisis, myself included. And mm. it's just given me some more tools to kind of think about um, just things a little bit more mindfully and take a deep breath and just, you know, pay yeah. attention. And the fact that it's... I'm like feeding myself with healthy things makes me feel yeah. better and, and, um, and yeah, so it's it's i mean it's great to hear sort of the the significant changes that have happened around as you say i think that i think the best word that you've probably used in there is mindful 
Yeah. It's it's not about necessarily, you know, this is because yeah, almost as a message going out to other people. It's it's not about right. You need to do this for this this right. and this reason. But if you if you're looking yes. for just generally for you to be someone who is more mindful of what they're putting into their body and and sort of their right. health consequences of certain things and sort of just how to look after yourself. It's it's great to hear that you know all these influences coming from stemming from that that one thing really. It's, yeah. it's great. And it's I think a lot of people don't realize that your food is something you can I mean you can mostly control. Um not maybe not for everybody, but um it's something that you can, you know, go to the grocery store and pick out what you're doing. And I think right now when so much is out of our control, that can kind of be a very mm. nice meditative moment yeah, for some people. For sure. And I think if people kind of looked at food less as like, I just got to eat something and fill myself and maybe more so of like, a, how am I going to fuel myself? How am I going to fuel myself for the days to come for all that's being thrown at me? Um, mm. I think people could just have a little bit be- of a better relationship uh, yeah food. hopefully hopefully the the lockdown window is maybe going to give that opportunity yes. to people because you know, know for so many it's always i mean I, I if i include myself here that the reason that you know i maybe didn't initially put as much thought into the food was is time it's yeah. you know if you're if you're working you know getting up real early in the morning working all day you get back and then you've got other things to do like the, the last thing you want to almost do yeah. yeah but it's if if we manage to just build that mindful relationship find ways of you know pre cooking certain things you know there's there's some real yeah. good chances of, of creating something cool there mm-hmm. but what I wanted to ask now Abby because yeah. uh, to be honest I'm genuinely interested um, simply because it's it's always weird to see how sort of um, Either whether whether there's any parallels between people literally on on two sides of the of the world or yeah. or anything like that really. Um, what do you do in your spare time? What do you get up to? <laughs> um, if you well, have I, any. Yeah, right now I'm unemployed. Um, I quit my job last February because Max, my partner, and I were going to go to Peru for three months and travel and then we were going to move out here to Oregon where we currently live now and I was going to find work and I was ready for a change and whatever so I'm still unemployed however um I've been doing a you know a lot of soul searching I would say <laughs> um Max and I, I are think hoping, many have yeah I think a lot of people COVID has forced people to kind of look internally and figure out what they actually like to do and whatever and um so Max and I have kind of come up with, we've always wanted to start a business, but we've kind of developed um, our actual business plan and what we want to do. And to boil it down, we want to start like a little permaculture nursery um, up in Maine. That's the goal. We'll see if we get there this year, early next year. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So I've been spending a lot of time working on that and like educating myself about those sort of things and like how to propagate plants because I used to farm back in college but like that was like five or six years ago and it was a totally different food system that we're then we're trying to kind of emulate um so I've been relearning um but honestly I also got a dog that back in September which a lot of people did during COVID and he's he's great I love him but he definitely you know he's a rescue he has some (laughs) issues uh he barks a lot he likes to talk and explain how frustrated he is and he gets frustrated very easily (laughs) as we all do um so i've been working on training him um but also i love to hike i love to get outside do yoga i cook a lot i try and keep up with this blog um Mm. yeah i'm kind of just like not so focused on like figuring out a way yeah yeah just i'm not grinding i'm kind of just like like, what do you're I picking at a few things yeah. for sure i mean and i i think it sounds like you're in almost the perfect point in your life in order to do that because yeah you're almost now going to be able to springboard onto you know these really interesting ideas and yeah. sort of what again go on yeah. sorry no i was just gonna say and i don't want to say that i'm like having the time of my life over here like doing whatever mm. i want to do i'm very privileged in the sense that i'm able to um live this way right now. I mean, I saved a ton of money when uh, I was working at my old job because we were living with Max's parents for a per- for a full year and I saved yeah. a bunch of money doing that. So I was very smart about my choices at the beginning and that's allowed me to do this. But there are definitely days where I'm like, what the heck am I doing with my life? And I feel frustrated and I feel like I'm not enough or whatever. So I don't want you to think that I'm just like 
you know, mm. having a great time doing yoga and yeah. cooking all the time. Cause I mean, I am, but like there are definitely hard days and, um, it, you know, especially since the future is a little uncertain and Max and I are about to embark on this business. Like we're, you know, what's nerve wracking. It's like, Oh my gosh, are we yeah. going to be able to be accountable and do this? And, but not it's a lot of pressure when you're you go from like working for a boss to like being your own boss it's like can i actually sustain this so um yeah, yeah so there's a lot of thoughts around that um but yeah so yeah is i mean it's even, again even from my own perspective it's been you know i suppose my situation is slightly different in the sense that i still have um you know, I have the job, which is my main job, but mm -hmm. I fully get you in the sense of like, when you're wanting to try and do something new and you're wanting to it to be your thing where you're sort of in control of it, it, it can be overwhelming at points, regardless of what sort of point in the process you're in, because mm -hmm. there's so many things that you've never considered before that you're now having to start to consider. But yeah. I mean, I, th I think what's a really nice maybe transition for, for you in this sense is is your current blog is is plant-based yeah. moods um, yeah. which i think we have to we have Let's to dive into it. that yeah for sure yeah. so what inspired you to do it what made you go for it yeah so um i had been thinking about it for a while uh before i actually started it so you know like i said going vegan i kind of had to make my own food because you know you go out to eat and everything has cheese on it like you don't realize it until you kind of are limiting yourself you know <laughs> yeah. um so I, Max and I started cooking just a lot. And honestly, I'm going to shout out uh, Lauren Toyota at Hot for Food. She really, she's, she's a vegan blogger and she is just amazing. She really inspired a lot of what Max and I do and cook and just like we learned with her how to cook in this way and we bought her cookbook right at the beginning when we were vegan and we just started making all these delicious things and I was like I want to make my own things and I started doing that and experimenting and a lot of the time it was coming up pretty tasty and I started writing them down just so I would have them for myself so I could like go back and look and see what I made um but honestly what really kind of jet set at it was like I said, Max and I went to Peru and that's when kind of everything hit um, in COVID. And we, that's a whole nother story of trying to escape Peru during oh, the pandemic. I mean, <laughs> but, th this is, this is going to be the first of many conversations. Yeah, I'm just going to so, put that out there. So we'll, we'll, we'll cover that. We'll yeah, cover so, that. So we, we emerged out of the jungle. We got back to the States and I realized I had quit my job. I had nothing to do. And we were in hardcore lockdown, like, you know, attitudes have changed about lockdown since and but yeah. you know i think around april and may everybody was terrified so everybody was like staying in their homes and not doing anything so i was like okay how can i make good use of my time and i was like i've always wanted to start a food blog and i had started like other blogs in the past and never really like took off or like i couldn't stay consistent with it because it wasn't like like i was trying to kind of I was an English major in college, so I was like, I'm a writer, like, I should be writing, and I just, like, couldn't find my groove, and then when yeah. I found cooking, I was like, oh, like, this is kind of a good mix of both those things, let's um, do it, and mostly I built the blog as just, you know, a kind of, um, I guess, just marketing point so my goal was to mm. move out here and try and find a job in the food industry and farming and that kind of field and i was like okay look i have this blog that i've developed like i'm competent in a b c d like it was kind of just a little portfolio and that was my goal to yeah. kind of make a little portfolio of what i could do and to also challenge myself on wordpress i have so many headaches from just like trying to figure out computers i'm not the best <laughs> Um, but I made it, it. Well, can I just can I just jump in here and say yeah. if you haven't gone and seen um, Abby's blog yet, you need to go and look at it because it looks <laughs> fantastic. Like it Thanks. looks so good. Sorry yeah. to, to no, digress. No, it's all good. It was definitely difficult to get us that position. WordPress is very finicky if you're not like super tech savvy. So that was a whole learning experience. So I was, the blog was mainly a way to build myself a portfolio, teach myself some new skills. Um, and also just, you know, maybe I had dreams of maybe like making that the business. Um, I don't know mm. if that's going to be the case, but I think as we transition to this like permaculture nursery, like those skills that I learned over there can definitely be transformed. And I could also say like, here are the things we were growing on our property. Make this, this recipe over here. Yeah, that I have on this, this is so, exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah so it it's will, kind it will, of it will be a good counterpart to it. Yeah, exactly. 
so it's it was it's kind of evolved in that way in terms of the way we now are thinking about it but at the time it was mainly like I want a tool that I can market myself with to show that I have something that I've been working on during COVID. Like I'm not just sitting here, you know, so that was mainly the inspiration and I haven't kept up with it as much as I ha would like. Um, but I've, you know, kind of put a lot of my time onto Instagram now and cause that's how you get people to, to click these days. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to focus on that a little bit more and kind of get into the more lifestyle-y type content um and yeah it's just i been think it's fun. a good fit though i think yeah, it's a good thanks. fit considering everything that you've everything that you've been speaking about so far you know and the right. way in which that the plant-based diet has influenced your your just your general life i think right. that is as interesting to find out about as also the recipes and it's great right. then if you you know you, you build this this um Brand is maybe the wrong word, but sort of this, you know, you build this yeah. repertoire of, of experiences and, and how that's maybe informed and influenced you. And then being able to tie that back into, you know, that the business that you're about to go on to right. and, and then also the, you know, the, the recipes that you're creating. I, I think mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, it's a really nice mesh of things. Yeah, um, I agree. To, so, I mean, I have to ask this question. I mean, I have yeah. to ask this question. Oh man, but what is it? What <laughs> is your go-to plant-based oh, meal what is the go-to the go-to um I, I, it's hard to choose because i have put I, you on the spot i know we really <laughs> we we really have a diverse like we literally have a google sheet document of like all the meals we've created and we just kind of look at it each week and we're like let's pick things um but i would say if there's like a day where we're kind of like not really prepared for whatever we're just trying to like throw something together um there are probably two things that we do the first is just veggie pasta love me a veggie pasta this is not a recipe mm. it's just spaghetti Classic. some broccoli onions uh something veggies sauteed and with some red sauce um we use rouse red sauce i don't know if you have it in the uk but it's amazing. rouse rouse r a z R and when you say red sauce, oh. are you saying ketchup? No. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I forgot. There's that whole... No, it's, it's marinara, essentially. It's like... It's oh, okay. I mean, that made a lot more sense because I was yeah. just thinking, you're, you're just like, smashing no. like a bottle of tomato <laughs> sauce in this? Oh, what are you doing? No, no, no. Sorry. I forgot there's that, uh, <laughs> that cultural difference there. No, it's marinara, <laughs> like tomato... Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I sauce. get you. Like a pasta so, sauce, essentially. Pasta sauce. Yeah, pasta sauce. So that's like what we do if we're feeling really lazy because um, it comes together in like 15 minutes. It's great. We throw some uh, textured vegetable protein in there, which is um, a dried soy chunk is the only way I can describe it. It almost looks like cereal, uh, like little I bits of cereal. I can visualize it now. Yeah. <laughs> in in delicious, right? It, it, but actually... <laughs> it, in reality, it, it's not yeah, too bad. If you, you rehydrate it with some veggie stock and it actually yeah. takes on a very similar consistency of like ground turkey. Um, so we throw, oh. that in the, throw that in there. And that mm. is like our kind of go-to. But um, I would say like if I was to like sell someone on like you could be vegan, it can be delicious. We've been making these banh mi bowls lately. Uh, so it's kind of like a take on the banh mi Vietnamese sandwich, um, but it's in a bowl, like a grain bowl. So we do sushi rice, so like really good sticky sushi rice. I love sushi rice. And Ooh. then we, we pickle some radishes and carrots. It's a quick pickle. It's, this is actually on my blog, so you can take a look at this. <laughs> uh, little, Over little you go. plug there. Pause the video. Pause the video. Go Pause have a little video. look. It's go there. Um, so yeah, we, so pickled radishes, some cabbage, some avocado, um, some sweet and salty cauliflower that's roasted in a, like a soy glaze. And then we fry some tofu and the kicker Ooh. is this like mayo sriracha sauce that I make. And it's literally just mayo sriracha, a little bit of soy sauce and some water to thin it out. And it's just like the perfect combination of flavors. You got the like oily, fatty fried tofu. You got the pickly, vinegary um, radishes and carrots. You have the sweet mm. and salty cauliflower. You just have like the delicious plain white rice. And then you have like the creamy mayo. It's just so good. Um, mm. And I think every time we make it, we're just like, oh, 
God, why don't we make this every week? Um, so, and <laughs> well, we, end up, we like, usually do. So, well, I mean, when it yeah. when something's great, how can you not? Like, yeah, it just it's a go to meal. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, it's it because this is the the interesting thing because this obviously that that meal in particular is is something that I think I mean I've got to try and if yeah, it's already try. on the if it's already on the blog plant based yeah. moods. Um, then <laughs> like that one, um, yeah. then, you know, ultimately I've, I've got to give it a go, but yeah. what, what I think I'm fortunate now in the sense that I've maybe, I've tried to eat a plant based or a number of plant based meals now. So I'm mm-hmm. quite used to that, but yeah. why do you think that, um, maybe people who are coming from a background where they, you know, they are still predominantly eating mm. meat. Why do you think people would or do struggle. struggle to make the transition to, you know, a plant based diet essentially? That's a great question because I've actually thought about this because think about it. When you're a meat eater, I feel like most of your meals consist of a protein, a veggie, a starch. You have like your slab of chicken, you got your green steamed green beans, and you got some mashed potatoes. It's separate. It's like three separate things. And I think, at least for me, I grew up eating that way. And so Mm. it's hard to think about plant-based foods in that way because you're not just going to like – slap a piece of tofu and i mean you can but it's like not going to be as good so people try and replicate that exactly they're like okay i need a direct um replacement so like i'm not gonna have chicken i'll just put some tofu right here season it with salt and pepper tastes probably not that good um and then i'll do some (laughs) do some uh green beans and starches so i think a lot of people look at food in those kind of like very you know they approach plant-based yeah. eating in the same way that kind of you know carnivores do where they're like i need the protein the grain and this where i've kind of turned my attention to making like a one pot meals like big pasta dinners lasagnas casseroles uh chicken pot pies like trying mm. to think about it as like one big dish than like three separate dishes has been really helpful and so that's where like grain bowls come in and it's like kind of one thing is all mixed together as opposed to like three separate things um yeah so that was really helpful just to kind of think about it that way because i think a lot of people try and like find direct replacements and it's not so much that it's more so just like trying new things and figuring out what you like because yeah if you're not if you don't sorry my lighting's getting a little weird um Uh, you're right if you don't like you know, tofu, like don't eat it. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? And I feel like people think like, oh, I'm vegan. I have to eat X, Y, and Z now. You don't, you just need to like experiment. And I think that's where people get really nervous because they are used to eating the same way and they don't want to try new things. And not maybe that they don't want to, they're just, no, I get a hundred, a hundred percent. I think you just need to figure out what you like in that kind of category as opposed to trying to find things that directly replace chicken or cheese or dairy. I mean, luckily now, I think more than ever, there are so many substitutes out there that are fantastic and can give you that direct replacement. But when it comes to like choreographing an entire meal, you have to be a little bit more creative. And I think that's really a holdup for a lot of people. So. Mm. Well, it's, that would be, for me, that's the most interesting point about my own development. Because when I was, when I was a kid, um, I had this just like really terrible experience with, with food and I don't know what it was. It's a particular meal made me really, really ill. And then that as a consequence ended up meaning that I basically was, I was basically afraid of food, like certain textures and things like that. It would literally ruin me. So I would have the most budget meals all the way up like through my teenage years and even then when I transitioned to you know being more of an adult so maybe got to around 18 I was definitely trying more foods I think I'd started to get past that point but yeah. it wasn't until probably the l- a year and a half ago where I decided to turn more to having a plant-based um, sort of set of meals in a week mm-hmm. was that I actually really started to explore different types of foods yeah. and when that and this is again this is coming from someone who is you know i literally ate barely anything like i would literally have like chips i'd have like chicken nuggets i'd have like burgers yeah. like you know that would be all i would go to yeah. i now i would say that i have probably had better meals that are plant-based 
than meat because right. I've applied the same principle of what you just said there is mm-hmm. that when you don't look at your meal where it you you have to have that piece of meat and if it's not there you've lost an entire section of the meal yeah. it's you know you can have so many combinations of things that do an absolute job and make it taste so good that yeah. ultimately you don't even feel like you need that anymore but right. that that sort of ties in quite nicely um because obviously i know you say that you are now obviously fully vegan or slash yeah. eating a, a plant-based diet but as as yeah. much as the replacements as much as the replacements are fine is there a particular thing that just just miss. missing it you know yeah and th- like something that i haven't been able to find a great replacement for yeah. um for me i think it's sour cream and cream cheese uh, <laughs> those I mean that things. is not that is, I mean I, che- like cheese orientated I get that for sure cheese is a big one but I will say that a lot of like I have gotten really accustomed to the tastes because uh, they are different they do taste different um, I'm not going to say they're cheese they're different mm. um, but there are so many great replacements out there that do the same thing they're melty they have that like kick to them they give you that kind of fat content and they're good enough you know what i mean but Mm. sour cream is one of the things that like every (laughs) time i've tried a you know a brand or whatever it just tastes like tofu or just like bland it doesn't have that like sour kind of kick to it although i did find one brand i don't know if you guys have forager in the uk but that brand makes a good one. That's the only one I've been able to like oh, get close to. Um, but mm. cream cheese, I think, is really one that I have not found a good one. Either it's like super bland or like too tart or whatever. So those are those are tough things. So I would say for a lot of people, cheese is probably the hardest thing. Um, cause yeah. everybody drinks oat milk now, like dairy and milk is like, everybody's mm. on to almond milk, oat milk, rice milk, like everybody's yeah. on that. Everyone's on that train. We don't need to but get people, cheese. but cheese, yeah, cheese <laughs> is definitely, definitely hard. And I think it just takes time, which is like the worst. Yeah. To, for, worst. to forget about to for, it. That, exactly. it's, it's like, it's, a, it, you do you're literally, you're going forget. into a period of mourning. You're like, it's literally a period of mourning. <laughs> you have to I mean, bookmark it, put it away and just say, because, yeah. well, but this is because my, my problem is that because I stopped having milk and I stopped having cheese quite a yeah. while ago, um, I now can't eat cheese. It will literally ruin, ruin me. You. It will yeah, literally that's the other ruin thing. me. I think that is, you know, can kind of work in your favor for transitioning. Well, it's like you cut I, it out. Not in my then, favor because well, I want my cheese when I want that cheese, you know, sometimes. <laughs> right. It's like, for example, like honestly, pizza companies in the UK yeah. are not getting it right or maybe more localized ones are, but any anything that's even related to a chain or to be honest it doesn't even have to necessarily be a chain like mm-hmm. their vegan choices are just basically just cut out the cheese yeah. and you're having a tomato base or it's like right. really really crappy like plastic oh god that doesn't yeah. melt yeah that literally like tastes like you're eating plastic yeah no i know and yeah. i think more company like i think maybe the u.s is a little different like i think there are a maybe more options we've, over we've definitely here? no well we have we have got more vegan because for example there's a vegan I, I wish i could remember the name of it but i've got a vegan cheese in the fridge that oh, has nice. been real it is a real real nice cheese like yeah. i genuinely enjoy there are, it like but, artisanal oh, vegan cheeses now that people yeah. make like you can make like blue cheese anyway i've i've just <laughs> found that like some you gotta kind of try things and you need to figure yeah. out what kind of hits those marks for you you know like mm. and obviously like you should i mean you shouldn't be eating a ton of this stuff because it is cut it's not like it's manufactured you know it's not mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. milked from an almond or whatever it is you know it, <laughs> so yeah i mean i think it's tough but um like you said, you kind of have to forget about it a little bit and then your palate will actually change. Like that's the one Mm. thing that I think most people don't realize is that they're always going to miss cheese and they're always going to miss bacon and they're always going to do it. Like I know bacon tastes good. Like I'm not going (laughs) to deny that, but (laughs) I've just learned to like, I just don't crave it anymore. I just like, yeah, for sure. It just, it, you change your palate changes. You get used to eating the same things and similar in the way that you know you're just in your patterns it's just kind of unlearning those things but 
But yeah, I mean, cheese is hard. But luckily, I've found um, a bunch of recipes and I've been experimenting with things. This may not be the case for a lot of people because not everybody is going to, like, go to their kitchen and, like, make cheese, <laughs> vegan cheese. Mm. But I've found some recipes that work for me and, you know, it's kind of a special occasion. And when I make, like, mac and cheese that's, like, made out of cashews and sweet potatoes as opposed to milk, you know? So it's yeah. – you just kind of have to – figure it out that's the best i can give you (laughs) well it leads me quite because i've got a couple more questions to ask you and we'll we'll wrap things up but Mm -hmm. it it does lead me quite nicely to to this point is i mean i i have definitely noticed a change across um sort of within the uk i think like you say i think there is still a really heavy meat eating culture that exists and you know you know fair, fair enough and this is the thing is that i'm someone that you know I don't necessarily buy meat here, so I don't necessarily have meat in the house. But if I've gone out and I'm going to have a meal, like I might have a piece of meat. Or if someone yeah. makes me a meal with meat in, I'm, I'm going to eat that. But mm-hmm. do you think that, maybe it's the way, wrong way to phrase the question, but do you think that we'll ever reach a point where there will be more people eating a plant-based diet than meat? Mm. Or maybe the best way to say it is, do you think that we'll reach a point where meat for the most majority of people is not a daily occurrence in their Mm. diet i think eventually yes uh because for multiple reasons i think a lot of it has to do with our agriculture system if we don't shift away from monocultures and you know CAFOs and large huge agricultural operations we're going to run out of land. The land's not going to work. We're not going to be able to sustain it, essentially. If we don't sh- shift towards permaculture and sustainable methods of raising animals and whatnot, then, you know, we're going to run out of space, essentially. Um, and so I think, you know, as people are kind of, you know, it's becoming a little bit more of a trendy thing to go plant-based. So I think more mm. people are trying it, which is really great. And I think people like it for the most part. It does have its limitations. But I think what most people just n- maybe not need to do, but need to like look at the way that they approach food is they need to have meat not be the center of the meal. I think Um, my friend Graham, actually, he went vegetarian around the same time we went vegan because he's a very logical person and we, uh, were giving him some arguments about, you know, reasons to do it. He was like, yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And we were like, okay, good for you, Graham. He's in. And so now he does this thing where he does meat of the month. So he just reserves like a, he makes it a special occasion. He, um, he's vegetarian, but like he will sometimes- yeah. once a month indulge and you know like i'm not gonna lie like there are times where i indulge i don't really eat meat anymore it just kind of skeeps me out at this point but like there's something but it's the about products like, yeah things a, with some form of animal product in it yeah like there's something about a soft boiled egg in a pot of ramen you know what i mean like you can't replicate that so like very infrequently i will you know go try and find the most local sustainable eggs that i can yeah. and i'll do that like for my birthday and so i think it's just looking at it like as a special treat will kind of change people's thinking and also it'll just you know decrease the demand for it so people can start to transition towards these more healthy ways of cultivating animals so that way we can kind of you know people can keep doing what they want to do i'm like honestly like if we can kind of shift our agriculture system to be more sustainable and more ethical towards the animals and whatever like i'm okay with that like i'm not here to tell you like no like i know that these are people's livelihoods and like you know it it's been ingrained in our culture for millennia however many yeah yeah Yeah. and it's not going to shift overnight but i think with people do start kind of you know seeing all these different products that are coming out that are new and intriguing and plant-based and vegan and don't do any harm to the environment. It's become, I think it will catch on. And then hopefully the agricultural system and the supply and demand chain will kind of follow that. Um, but I do, I do see the shift coming and even just Mm. like friends of mine that have been prolonged meat eaters, like the entire time that I've known them, making the switch, they're making switches like, and my parents too, even, um, 
like the older generations are people are really seeing the health benefits and it can really you know eating meat like the world health organization said that it help it causes cancer so like people mm-hmm. are not taking that lightly as much anymore and um and even like max and i like i said lived with his parents for a year like i i mean i cook a lot so i cooked a lot for them and they were very happy with that and you know wade is still max's dad is still a meat eater but like he was vegan pretty much the entire time i lived there yeah. just because that's what was there um and yeah so i, I think, think people I think, are shifting I, yeah and i i think the point you made around how it needs to be looked at i think is so important because yeah. you know for, at least from my perspective because obviously there, there are people you know there's a difference between you know following the maybe more of a vegan lifestyle and then having a, a plant-based diet yeah. if you know what i mean yeah. but that what i perceive anyway is that what would be great is that we just literally we downsize you know this mass production of meat through these you know humongous farms that really you know i've been exposed in so many situations to be absolutely horrendous so yeah i i don't think you know if this is something that people enjoy and you know ultimately they they will do because it is ingrained in our culture yeah. it would just be it would be great to be able to transition to a point where you know these product the scale of the production of these things are scaled right back and as you say it's much more sort of more of a friendly approach to to the yeah. way in which it's happening i mean obviously it can't be fully friendly because you're killing an animal but yeah it's 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 more about bringing it down to a smaller size so that you know you go to your local butchers and you mm-hmm. buy things from the local area rather exactly. than it being that and- you know supermarkets are bring in loads and loads of meat from all sorts of places. Exactly. And the thing is that these farmers that are, you know, either like growing the corn and soy to feed these animals or, you know, grow, you know, cultivating these animals, animals in these places. The only reason why they're afloat is because the government, at least in the U S is is subsidizing it. So, you know, I mean, obviously we don't want to, just take like it's all they've known so it's you know but what i think a lot of people are starting to realize is that there are better ways to kind of make money off of land and more and more people are shifting towards kind of ecological farming methods where you know they kind of restore oil the soil to health and they build you know they plant a bunch of different species to kind of you know all work in the same system together um and yeah, I mean, I think as people are realizing the planet's on yeah. fire and that all these things keep happening, like, I mean, we're going to have to change. Otherwise, we're going <laughs> to... Yeah, a bit of it. Certainly, certainly some of our, our habits are, are inevitably going to have yeah. to change to, to meet what, what is, you know, is happening at this yeah. point in time. But to finish on, you know, a nice little point. Yeah, uplifting. I maybe. would love... Because this, this conversation has been absolutely amazing. And again, yeah. we... For sure, we're going to have to dive into to multiple more because you know yeah. we, there's so much we could talk about. Little but series <laughs> coming coming from plant based moods, Abby Jenkins. What yeah. would you say is one <laughs> simple suggestion that you could give to someone who is maybe trying to transition to eating a plant based diet? What would be one pro tip? Pro tip: um, start small. Like, don't go vegan overnight. Like I didn't, um, I would transition and maybe like focus on maybe for breakfast, you just don't eat meat, like just cut out meat at breakfast time. Um, or even dairy or eggs, whatever it is that you're kind of feeling like, or, you know, think of things that you just like, don't really like that much. Like if you're not a huge fan of steak, but like sometimes eat it, just like, don't eat it, just leave it alone. But I think a big part of it a good tip would just like to do some be is to do some research because when you're displayed with facts like it's kind of hard to argue against them um so i would do some research um but also like i think this is the most important thing is like be forgiving of yourself and don't see slip-ups as failures because that's really just it will uh demotivate you and it'll just make you like oh well i ate bacon today i might as well just like eat a turkey sandwich too like just don't let those tiny moments kind of ruin your perception of how you're eating. You know, just kind of say, okay, I ate that. I caved. 
let's just move on and let's try again tomorrow. Um, but I also, I love it. I, yeah, and I think also just like finding what works for you. Like if you don't like oatmeal, don't eat oatmeal. Like <laughs> make a tofu scramble, yeah. make avocado toast, make cinnamon rolls, make, you know, yogurt with some granola. Like, you know, like just figure out what you like to eat and then eat that. And, you know, yeah. but try and shepherd that in towards a plant-based kind of direction. So, yeah. She's coming hot at the end of the interview with Thanks. three different pro tips, but Sorry. all of them, all of them, no, all of them as worthwhile as the last one. Um, yeah, Abby, thank you so much for this. Yeah, it was no genuinely this really, great. it was, it, yeah, it was really interesting to, to talk through it. And yeah. if you haven't done so already, take yourself over to plantbasedmoods.com. It's an amazing, amazing blog, which, you know, it features a mixture of things, your adventures, your actual recipes themselves and just some, you know some general ramblings and yeah. if you like this video please do make sure to give it a like share it and also just encourage people to follow the serotonin channel because there's going to be so many more great things coming up mm -hmm. and definitely going to be with abby again so yes. for now all i want to say is thank you so much for watching and see yeah. you later